Hi everybody, this is Brian at Hobby Link Japan with another episode of Boss Builds, sponsored by Hobby Link Japan. And if you've been following along, you know that I've been building the Fujimi 172nd scale Type 10 main battle tank. Uh, go back to um, episode 1 to find out all about this. Uh, and for this episode, we, uh, I painted, uh, or more correctly, primed. I primed the tank, as I mentioned before, in flat black. Um, so I've shot some video at home, which we'll be showing you in a second. Uh, one thing I wanted to mention about when using airbrushes or, or spray painting in the home environment is uh, a, a good piece of equipment to have is a spray booth like these guys over here. Uh, you'll see in the video that I shot at home, I have an older uh, Tamiya spray work booth. Um, single motor type, a single fan type. Uh, it takes all the fumes and uh, particulates out of your work environment and blows them right out the window. It's got a little hose that goes out the back. Uh, in the video I mentioned that, that we have that in stock and ready to sell now. That's not quite correct. Well, I have an older one. Uh, it's now discontinued. What we have here, uh, as you just saw, is the Spraywork Paint Booth 2 uh, in two versions. There's a single fan version and a double fan version. Uh, both of them work really well, but if you're particularly concerned about getting all the fumes and paint uh, out of your workspace, uh, the twin fan version is really good. Uh, so it keeps your, your lungs clean. And uh, speaking of that, you'll see in the video too, I also used the mask uh, to put on there. Although strangely enough, you'll notice that during the video, I don't have the mask on sometimes, but that was uh, so you could understand what I was saying uh, while I was painting. But when you're painting, you should always wear the mask. Um, so up next, uh, sit back and check out the video I shot at home of priming the Type 10 main battle tank in Tamiya flat black enamel. Welcome to my home. This is my hobby room here. Uh, I don't want to show too much of it because it's a little messy, but uh, hey, hub rooms often are. And uh, today we're going to be um, painting, actually, we're going to start the airbrushing process of the uh, Fujimi 172nd scale Type 10 main battle tank that we've been assembling in the last couple of episodes. Parts are together here. Uh, what we're going to do today is, as I've been talking about up till now, is uh, priming it with black. We've decided to go with the Tamiya enamel, flat black, uh, as the primer coat to give it a nice shadowy effect when I put the rest of the paint on there. Um, so I'll be thinning this down with good old Tamiya enamel paint X20 thinner and uh, with the XF1 Tamiya flat black. Unfortunately we can't sell these overseas because uh, of the strict uh, shipping rules uh, that are in effect these days. Uh, but uh, let's get going. I'm going to go ahead and thin this down to airbrush consistency uh, and we'll uh, blow it on there with my airbrush, which I showed you in the last episode. Okay, to get started, uh, I've been shaking this bottle up a little bit. I shake and stir these enamel paints. I just give it a good tap, give it a good shake. I've been shaking it for a while. Ja, 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 like that. Uh, get the cap off there. Now I'm going to stir it up uh, with this handy dandy wooden stir, which is actually a, uh, it's called a kushi for takoyaki. Uh, if you know what takoyaki is, Japanese cuisine, it's uh, octopus balls. You stick this in, heat it up good. Uh, it's also great for stirring paint. So I'm just going to go in here. Ooh, this is a new bottle of paint. Really good consistency. Can you even see that on the camera there? Just swirling around, mixing it up good. Uh, I can't feel any clumps or anything in there. So this is, a, again, it's a brand new bottle of paint. Ready to go. I think we're all right here. And I'm going to put it in this handy dandy metal mixing dish that I always use uh, when I'm airbrushing, mixing airbrush paints. And a good way of doing that without spilling it is you put the stick on here like this, if you can see that, and uh, just pour this down here like that and it follows it right down there. And I'm going to say, I'm just eyeballing this, that's probably going to be good to get started. Uh, I'm not mixing colors per se, so uh, I'm not worried about uh, ratios of one color to the other. I'm just going to mix this up to a good airbrush consistency. Uh, and as we discussed last time, uh, a good consistency for airbrushing paints is often said to be the consistency of milk. And of course there are different kinds of milk, so your interpretations of what milk consistency may is may vary. Um, I just use it kind of as a guideline. And I'm using the uh, eyedropper here. This is a cheap eyedropper. Uh, we might even have these on the site. If we do, we'll link them up in the video. And just to pump in some uh, thinner here. And this is, of course, again, Tamiya's thinner for their enamel paints. And just going to keep mixing it up here. I might have lucked out on the first shot here and got 
what I would consider to be kind of a milk-like consistency. You can tell by how it kind of beads up. Uh, another way to check is you can kind of draw it up. I don't know if you can see what I'm doing here. You can kind of draw it up onto the sides of the bowl and see how thick or thin it's looking. Uh, this is looking pretty good actually. This might be a good consistency to blow through the airbrush. Uh, do some tests here. It might be a little thin actually. Might be just a tad thin. So it's all gonna can all be used at some point or another, so I'm going to slurp in a little bit more. Here, blurp. And I will probably, for the most part, call that done. Mix her up. Mixing her up real good. Yeah. If we can see what's going on there. Uh, yeah, this might actually be it. I think I got a good consistency seeing how it spreads uh, when I'm blotting it on the paper here, seeing how it uh, covers this metal as I do here. All right. So here we are over at my airbrushing booth. Uh, now this is a fine Tamiya article. Uh, I believe we have this in stock too. We'll also link this later uh, in the video. Um, this is a, I can't remember the name of it right now. I don't have the box here, but we'll I'll obviously list that later. Uh, it's the Tamiya single motor um, spray booth. It's got a single fan motor in there. Uh, it blows out. It's actually, you can't see here, maybe I'll back up and show you later. It blows right out the window with a hose. Um, it's got like a sponge filtration system here. Um, it sucks pretty good. And that's actually a good thing. This one sucks. That's good. Uh, sucks all the fumes and paint particulates uh, and puts them right outside. Uh, hopefully no one's outside when it's blowing it out there. Uh, it's pretty quiet too. I'm actually shooting this right now with my uh, a one-year, eight-month-old son, Takuma, is sleeping in the next room, right there. I hope I'm not waking him up with this, and I'm sure this isn't going to wake him up. I'll go ahead and fire it up. Can you even hear it? Well, I can hear it because it's right here, but uh, it's very, very quiet. Um, and it does a real good job of uh, taking all the particulates out. Uh, you can see it's quite dirty right now. Uh, the last thing I did with this was I have actually uh, primered some stuff with a can of uh, Tamiya spray primer. Uh, and that blows pretty hard, so it kind of splattered it on in there. Uh, but it kept all the stink out of the room, uh, which is its main purpose anyway. Uh, and it worked really good. Uh, the things I have here is a little cheap uh, turntable, like a Lazy Susan type thing. I believe I picked this up at a, a 100 yen shop. We have 100 yen shops here in Japan, dollar stores in America. Uh, do they have Euro stores in Europe or whatever? Uh, anyway, cost almost nothing. It's good to, to put your models on, spin them around. Uh, here's my handy dandy. Tamiya HD Trigger Airbrush we showed last time. A little squeaky squeaky, that'll clear up once I get some paint in there. So with all this together, this is all the noise it would make. So it's pretty good for spraying at night. Uh, so now I'm going to load up the paint into the paint cup right here. And uh, start painting that little guy. Okay, now I'm going to load my airbrush uh, with the color here. Uh, I've got my handy dandy eyedropper. And I'm just going to put in a decent amount of paint. I'll load it right on in here. Try not to splash too much of it around. Loading, loading, ever so carefully. Uh, not going to fill it up too full because I can always put more in later. This goes a long way, so I will probably be able to get uh, all the coverage I need. I've already splattered a bit here already. Should get the coverage I need uh, with just this amount of paint. All right, I'm going to put my little cup on, my little lid on the cup here, and I am ready to shoot. I'm going to fire it up here. Now, again, as I mentioned last time, you can adjust your needle here to where you want it to engage. I don't know how much you can see of that there. So since precision is not the name of the game with what I'm doing today, I'm just going to pretty much open it up so that uh, I can get good coverage. Yeah. Alright, just going to do some test blots on here. Uh, okay, paint is definitely coming out. Seems to be a good consistency. It's not too thick. 
Uh, doing it on cardboard like this isn't really a, the perfect test because uh, cardboard is a little more absorbent than uh, plastic surface is, but uh, it's blown color and that's what I wanted to check. So now, I've got to bring it over here and I've got it on the handy dandy uh, toilet roll holder there. And so before we get started, forgot to mention uh, this, a little respiratory protectorant here. Uh, the booth really blows the stuff out good, but just to be on the safe side, and because we are a very responsible hobby company and want to tell uh, all of our customers the absolute correct thing to do, uh, I should always wear a mask when you're painting. Alright, now that we're back, I'm going to start the painting uh, with this. Again, you get, get pretty good control with the airbrush, so I'm not really going to worry about uh, wearing gloves or anything. Um, I should be able to keep my hands out of harm's way. And I'm just going to start painting. As I mentioned before, you want to start off the model and continue. Off the model and continue. Uh, you never want to start blowing directly on the model. I'll go ahead and do under the undersides here. Since I'm doing this in black, obviously the parts that I want to be the most black would be the, uh, the undersurfaces. Like this, so. Just taking my time. Keeping a close eye on things, make sure there's a, you know, the paint's not getting too thick or puddling up. Again, always moving on and off, on and off, off and on. Catch these things here, the antennas. Uh, you know, actually, I might actually be getting a little paint on the old hands here, so... Makeshift glove, I happen to have this uh, clear plastic bag laying around that I'm going to grasp it with, and now I can uh, paint with impunity. Don't have to worry about getting my wedding ring painted or anything like that. Uh, wives do not like it when you paint your wedding rings. And now I can get uh, good coverage like this. Oh yeah. Now you'll also notice I have a nice fluorescent light here that gives me a good clear look uh, at everything I'm doing in here. Good even coverage, what I can see. Now you don't want to get too close with the airbrush. I don't have things start puddling up or pooling. So you know, I'm staying a good uh, couple inches, multiple centimeters away from the thing here. Can we see what we're doing here? Yeah, okay. So continuing along. Good uh, lighting here is uh, letting me check where I've been. I think I've got good coverage. Uh, this dries pretty quickly, so I can pretty much go back over some spots while I'm still holding it. Sure, I get all the metal on the antennas done here. I believe I've gotten everything in there. Uh, now, occasionally, when you're in a tight spot, like I'm trying to get in the basket here, it's hard to start on and off. So I might just give it a little, a little squirt. And that's where the double action comes in handy. I've got air coming out now, and the more I pull, when it engages, you know, I get a little, a little huff of paint. So. You can kind of control it, but still recommended is start off, end off, start off, end off, start off, end off. Uh, so I'm thinking I've pretty much got the turret covered here. Right down the barrel there. Yep. So. There we go. The turret is, I believe, completely painted. I don't know how the lighting is there, but uh, we'll show the close-ups uh, in the studio later. Put that aside. Now, I've got ready to go, of course. Uh, the hull here, and actually, demonstrate the usefulness of uh, this little turntable here. 
I'll go ahead and paint the top part while I have it on the turntable. Start on, go off, start on, go off, start on, go off, and I'm going to catch these angles like this. Rotating it around, getting all the different angles. Nice coverage. Uh, actually, the consistency of the paint I makes turned out to be pretty good. I'm getting good, uh, good coverage. It's not thick, but it's uh, it's going on perfectly. Perfectly fine. And now I want to pick it up and do some stuff underneath. I can just pick this up. Put this right in here. And I can pick it up. Again, I don't want to get my wedding ring black, so pick up my handy dandy plastic bag again. And I can continue on. And the paint booth is doing its job. I can barely smell the paint at all. Which means, of course, doing its job by sucking all the fumes and particulates out of here. Uh, oops. Got a little pick on the back there. Need to watch what I'm doing. Alright, now I need to get into some nooks and crannies here. This is really black. I don't know if you can see that in there. I uh, got some nooks and crannies. So, again, I'm going to break the on and off rule by basically just pointing it right in there and just doing little, little tightly controlled bursts. That I can get in there with like this. As you can hear, the air is already blowing, and and I can see I can see the paint going on, so I can control it, make sure I'm not. Uh, I'm just gonna do this to cover up any striations. Yeah, and I can get nice controlled bursts uh, without any fear of filling in a bunch of stuff with paint. So what I'm doing again is trying to get the black into all the nooks and crannies, of course. To create the light and shadow effect later. So I have these little bursts right where I want them. Again, breaking my rules, but uh, if you know the rules, you can break the rules. You get the, get, get the effects you want. And I'm thinking I pretty much got it. Oops. this to uh, make sure I've got even coverage. All right, folks, I think I'm done. I think I am done. There's the lower hull, or the, yeah, the lower hull, and there is the turret. Now, a very important thing when you're airbrushing is, of course, cleaning the airbrush. Uh, so now that we're done painting, um, I've went ahead and uh, scooped out as much of the paint from the color cup as I could uh, just using some paper towels and now I'm going to flush uh, some of the same thinner that we have been using uh, through the airbrush into my uh, handy dandy airbrush water collector bottle here uh, also available at HLJ. Uh, so hang on, let me load up a decent amount of thinner here, and I'm just, again, this is just the enamel thinner. Uh, when I'm done with the whole project, I'll probably shoot some um, lacquer thinner through it uh, once all the family's out of the house uh, to really clean it out. Uh, so this is a cool thing. You just put water in here. It's got a little filter at the top, uh, and you just blow through. Some of it is seeping out, but it's all going right out the uh, right out the spray booth thing here. So this is how I'm cleaning it. Now, Tommyo recommends, and this is 
slightly controversial, because some people say you don't need to do it, but Tommy I recommends that you actually hold the cover of this and let some stuff bubble back up. Uh, I don't want to get the camera too close because it'll spill it, but uh, if you hold the top like this, or the, the nozzle, it'll uh, essentially blow the air back up through here, flushing it out. Uh, I've always done it. As I've said before, I've had this piece for 10 years, uh, never had a problem with it. So I usually do it once, uh, and then I carry on with blowing the rest of this inner out through it. And then once this is done, you're ready to load more color uh, and keep going. Uh, again, if, when I'm done with it uh, for this project, I'll run some lacquer thinner through it just like I'm doing now. And there we are. We made it through. And it's pretty clean in there. Wipe out the cup. Wipe out the nozzle. Um, I'll probably go ahead and take the nozzle off here and wipe it around. Do some thinner just to get the paint off there. You don't want any paint to dry or you'll have some problems later. Uh, but I'll do the real thorough cleaning once the entire project's done and I'm done with the airbrush and I'm going to put it up. So there we go. Clean airbrush. Ready for more paint. Alright folks, so there we go. Um, uh, using my airbrush setup, uh, I sprayed on the black, flat black uh, Tamiya enamel primer. Uh, as you can see here, uh, we'll show some better close-ups of these guys uh, when we get back to the studio in the office. And hopefully next time uh, I'll have the time to put down the base uh, colors. Uh, which, as you can see right here, I've got the, the Tamiya Acrylic uh, Dark Green and the Tamiya Acrylic Brown. These are the two colors that we'll use for the camouflage on this guy. Uh, so I'm going to give this a couple days to uh, set and then we'll start spraying on uh, the base camouflage colors. And there we go. Here's the Type 10 all uh, primed up in flat black. And you know, actually I think it really looks kind of cool in flat black like this. Uh, almost don't want to continue with the painting. Um, I do that sometimes when I'm building models, particularly if I'm doing a lot of modifications or adding a lot of extra parts to it. Uh, before we even prime it, you can see all the different colors of the different plastics, the resin, the metal parts you put on there. Uh, and it really looks cool. So you almost get to a stage where you don't want to cover all that up, all that hard work that you've done. Uh, so uh, the key there is just take a lot of pictures so you can show it off to all your friends and say, here's what I did. Uh, so yeah, as you saw in the video, uh, it was pretty easy to prime this guy in flat black. Uh, I got pretty good coverage everywhere. Uh, obviously you can't re reach all the tiny little nooks and crannies. If I was to do this kit again, maybe I would uh, pre-paint way up under the suspensions in there and make sure that uh, everything is covered because um, I don't like the, the look of bare plastic. Although, looking at this now, I cannot find any bare plastic anywhere in here. But um, So I think it worked out pretty good. It's primed and ready to go. Now a couple things I noticed when I was checking out the model after I had finished priming it here and looking at some references is I noticed there's some details on top of the turret. I don't know if you, uh, Luke can pull in tight enough here to see. Um, on top of the turret there are what uh, I guess are lifting hooks, lifting eyes. Uh, only two, so I don't know, maybe this is for lifting panels off the top of the turret. Um, but these were molded solid. And uh, checking my handy dandy references here, you can even see on, on the cover here, obviously those are supposed to have eyelets or, or holes through them uh, in order to facilitate them being you know, lifting parts of the turret off. So uh, I took my handy dandy little uh, micro pin vise here with, uh, I believe I used a 0 0.5 drill and uh, zoom, zoom, just drilled those little guys out. Really improves the look of the model, uh, improves the, the realism because obviously those aren't solid pieces. Uh, yeah, I just thought it was a pretty good effect. So to sum up uh, the actual building and what I've done modification-wise to the model, it's only drilling those two holes uh, and adding the two uh, brass wire antennas. And uh, other than that, uh, the kit is completely box stuck. Obviously, it's a brand new kit, so there aren't any photo etch sets or uh, any aftermarket parts available for it right now, but uh, I'm sure they'll be coming sometime in the future. But really, the model itself is uh, you know, really well done, highly detailed, don't really need that. Maybe, as we mentioned before, the basket uh, might uh, be nice in a photo etched piece. Uh, but there we go. Primed and flat black, uh, ready for the base, the base coats of paint, um, which, as we have talked about before, I will be using if I can pick these up with one hand. Maybe I can't. I'll put this down. I'll be using the Tamiya Acrylics. Um, these are GA Tie colors, dark green and brown. 
And so the next time you see uh, this model, I'll have it painted. And I'll also shoot some more video at home of using the acrylic paints uh, to paint the two camouflage colors. Uh, so that'll be on uh, the next episode of Boss Builds with me and the Fujimi 172 nd scale Type 70, no, not Type 70, Type 10 main battle tank.